I can kill with a single word. I can hurl a ball of fire into the midst of my enemies. I rule a squadron of skeletal warriors who can destroy by touch alone. I can raise a wall of ice to protect those I serve. The invisible is discernible to my eyes. Ordinary magic spells crumble in my presence. Hello, my name is Kate and I'm gonna tell you about the knight who fall to the dark side but found redemption in D&D. This is the second video of the short Death Knight series and if you haven't watched the first one where I tell about creatures origins, I suggest to start from it. Lord Thos, a famous Death Knight of Dragonlance setting who became a reference model for all future Death Knights in D&D universe and was named top 15 of most powerful villains. He is also known as a Knight of the Black Rose or Fallen Knight of Salamnia. The Knight betrayed his ideals and vows, turned to own dark emotions and temptations that resulted in his transformation into a fearless killing machine. This Death Knight can be found in many literature and some adventures such as Dragonlance series of adventures or Ravenloft setting, where he could be found in his own domain, Citicus. But how did he become like that? Let's figure it out. Lord Lauren Soss was born in 50 PC by Dragonlance timeline to Iron Kel Soss and his wife. He was raised in the castle of Dargard Keep as an only child and was prepared to become the heir of the House of Soth, which was ruling house in Salamnia. The future position of Lord Thoth was rivaled by his half-brother Bard, Ergol Birdsong, and half-sister Alcyon Felgard, a milkmaid, who were bastards offspring from Lord Thoth's father, who never took them to the family. Both were masterfully killed by father, Lord Thoth, and Caradoc, in about four years before the Cataclysm to prevent the claim on the throne. At the age of 10, in 40 PC, Thos was conscripted to the army of Knights of Solamnia and began his career as a squire under Holger Windsound teachings. Lord Thos grew as a tall and well-built man. He had piercing grey eyes and thick black shoulder length hair. He also had the traditional Salamnic long moustache. The time passed, and the moment had come for the squire to prove himself to become the full member of the Knights of Salamnia and receive a precious knighthood. The young man left the keep and began adventuring in the nearby land, seeking glory and honor in three deeds. It is known that he led a mission into the Empire of Ergoth to rescue two knights who had been captured by ogres. As the second deed, Lord Sauce defended the caravan of pilgrims and escorted them to Istar to pray in the temple of King Priest. As the third deed that he presented to the council was saving a boy from fire, he brought the boy back to the healing at Dargard Keep, which saved his life. After hearing about all his deeds, he was gladly accepted to the Knights of Salamnia as a full member in four years before Cataclysm. From that moment, he swore the oath as Sularus of Mythos, or My Honor is My Life. Though his first marriage was not out of love, but an arranged marriage, he proposed to Lady Corian Gladria from Noble Palanthus family and she moved to his castle to marry him. Do you, Lord Lawrence Thoth, say Corin Gladria to be your wife, to love her with a few hearts and honor her as you would the oath and the measure? With all my heart, do you, Corin Gladria, take Lord Lawrence Thoth to be your wedded husband, to love him with a pure and loyal heart, and to honor him as the oath and the measure? the knightly code by which he has vowed to live his life. With all my heart. And so they wed. And so started to rule Dargard Keep. He built a small circle of followers, which included his steward Caradoc, and thirteen most loyal friends, who were also knights. Yet Thor started to long for adventures and battles pretty soon, and didn't miss an opportunity to go on one. 
For the next year, Thos didn't miss any chance to answer the duty call and rushed with his men towards danger to save his land from ogres, bandits or other evils. On one of those missions, Thos saved a large party of elven women, one of whom was Isolde Denisa, a very beautiful elf maid who immediately catch Thos's eye, and he gladly offered to escort her to his Dargard keep. Why, of course, to show his best butterfly collection. Thos's wife learned of the affair and decided to get pregnant with the help of a witch magic, because she thought that only new heir would save their marriage. After nine months, Corrin brought a child into this world, in two years before Cataclysm. Yet, to Thor's surprise and fear, it was an abomination twisted by dark magic. The eyes of the child were dark, it had a crown of bones appearing from its head, two arms were on one side of the body, while the leg was in place of an arm while the second leg was starting from the child's back. Driven completely mad by this vision, Sos pulled out his dagger and sliced both the child and mother to pieces. When Sos left the room, he told everyone that both Karin and the child died during the childbirth and his ever-loyal servant Caradoc helped to spread his lie. About half a year after, in late second year before Cataclysm, Thos married Isolde. Sometimes after less than one year before Cataclysm, she bore a boy to Thos, who was named Peridor. However, the peace of the night was disturbed again. Few months before that, the panel of night started to investigate the case of mysterious murder of Lady Corian, and Healer, who was helping during the childbirth, testified and it helped to gather evidence to charge Thoth guilty. Yet, he escaped the death sentence with the help of his 13 knights and he fled to the Dargard Keep, where his isolation began. Without conquests and adventuring, he became more and more moody and grumpy. He didn't leave his castle and became angrier each day. One day, through his new wife, the gods sent a message to him requesting to travel to the city of Istar and stop evil king priest in his temple. He was preparing a dark ritual, which would undo everything anyone had ever known. The quest was a suicide mission, instructing Thos to try to stop the king priest. When the Thos would try and die, the gods would revivify him, giving him more strength to try again, until he finally succeeds. And Thos embarked on the quest, seeing it as the only opportunity to atone for his sins. He gathered his men and traveled to Istar to stop the cataclysm. Yet on the halfway he met the group of elven maidens again, who told him that cataclysm is not real, but his wife Brilliant lied to cover her cheating while Thos is absent. Infuriated, the knight believed in it and returned to the keep to face his wife. Meanwhile, the cataclysm happened, and the blast of energy shattered Dargard Keep, setting it on fire and trapping his wife and son under the burning ceiling. Thos didn't help them, listening to their screams of agony. With her last breath, Isolde cursed Thos. You will die this night in fire, she said. Even as your son and I die, you will live one life for every life your folly has brought to an end. Set aside the buried light of candle, torch and rotting wood And listen to the turn of night caught in your rising blood How quiet is the midnight love, how warm the winds where ravens fly Where all the changing moonlight love fails in your fading eye how loud your heart is calling, love, how close the darkness at your breast, how hectic are the rivers, love, drawn through your dying wrist. And love, what heat your frail skin hides, as pure as salt, as sweet as death, and in the dark the red moon rides, the fox fire of your breast. After fire died out, Lord Thoth rose as Death Knight, followed by his loyal knights, who rose as undead skeletal servitors. 
The elf maidens, who were in Knight's court, turned to banshees, who reminded the Death Knight about his atrocities ever since. Or still wore the charred armor of Knights of Salamnia, but the rose emblem burnt and twisted became black of smoke and fire. From that moment he was known as a Knight of the Black Rose. He ruled the ruins of his castle over 300 years after the Cataclysm event, until Tahisis, Queen of Darkness and Goddess of Evil, brought the destroyed Temple of King Priest to the Abyss, corrupting it and creating a portal to Kryn. This event pushed another chain of events in action, which led to Kityara Uthmatar, a cunning mercenary and adventurer, becoming the leader of Blue Dragon Army and a great servant of Queen of Darkness. Then, about 50 years later, in 348, the War of Lands began with Dragon Armies invading Nordmar region. Three years later, in 351, Kithiara led an attack with her Blue Dragon army and eventually discovered South Dargard Keep. Death Knight promised to serve her if she would survive one night in the keep alone. After she did, Thor swore allegiance to her in 352 and allowed her to stay in his repaired keep and make it a base of operations. Through years, Thor's respect to Kithiara grew. Though he couldn't feel love or any positive emotions, he treated her as equal in power, determination and strength. Several years later, in around 356, Kitiara asked Sos to assassinate Christiania Tarinius, who was helping Kitiara half-brother to become a god. Thor struck the blind woman and defeated her in combat. He spelled power word kill on her and sought to eliminate the target, yet Chrysania survived by the will of the god Paladin, who Thos once served. While Thos couldn't experience positive emotions, dark thoughts dwelled in his mind. A year passed and growing connection and jealousy made Thos persuade Kithiara to storm Palantas Citadel in 357 and get rid of two enemies at once, Dalamar, a powerful wizard, and Raisling, Kithiara half-brother. Under Lord Thos' advice, Kithiara attacked the Citadel. Their armies led an assault on the city of Palantas, and Thos was enjoying slaughtering everyone inside the city with his fellow knights. His revenge was sweet and hand was swift. Yet, Kithiara was slain in battle by Dalamar. Returning back to his keep, Lord Thor spent lots of time trying to find Kithiara's soul to claim as his, and finally he found it in the abyss. He sent his loyal servant Caradoc to catch it in the medallion and bring the soul back. In return, the Death Knight promised to help him become human again. Caradoc knew that Death Knight would lie, so he hid the soul. Furious, Death Knight attacked Caradoc, and in the moment before he could win the small fight, Dark Powers sucked them both to the realms of the Dread. The Amazed brought you here, did they not? Yes, one moment I was in my castle on Kryn, the next I was surrounded by a foe. When it receded, I was on a hill a few miles from here. The wolves in your forest are quite large. The wolves are but half as ominous as the other creatures that prowl these woods. But little in this land could harm you, Lord Sos. And what land is this? The Duchy of Barovia. Barovia. I have never heard of this place. Is it part of Kryn? A level in the abyss, perhaps? Though I have traveled much with my tribe, I know nothing of either of these places. Barovia is simply Barovia. Sucked into the land of Strahd, Lord Sauls met with Vistani tribe. He didn't know Vistani spied on him for Strahd, but still didn't trust their leader and attacked her. In her last breath, the leader of the tribe, Madame Girani, cursed him. A pox upon you, thoughts of Darigard Keep! You will never return to Green again, though your home will always be in view. 
Thoth captured Avistani woman Magda, who promised to lead him to Castle Ravenloft, as only Strahd could know where Karadok went or what happened to him. On his journey to Strahd, he found Azrael, a very badger, who had become a trusted ally of the Death Knight. Strahd welcomed Death Knight at his castle, and even though he was almost invincible in his own domain, he still considered a Death Knight a great threat and major power in his land. Strahd cleverly manipulated Lord Thos for many months into doing his bidding. He wanted to get rid of close neighbor vampire Duke Gundar and lied to Thos about means of escape from Barovia to Kryn. The Death Knight agreed to the bargain and went on to the hidden portal, which would only open by spilling the blood of Gundar in his citadel. Together with Azrael, they killed the vampire son of Gundar, Medrot, and opened a dark gate. On the other side of the portal, they both met a woman, who asked them to give their souls. I think it was a kind of manifestation of dark powers who were testing them, yet they were nothing to give, and so the portal didn't work, and instead it transported them to Barovia again, to Valakia village. Feeling betrayed, Death Knight rushed towards Castle Ravenloft to take revenge on Strats and attack the front gates of the castle. Yet, Vampire traded his peace by giving away Karadok location to the Death Knight, not willing to battle with a strong enemy. The Vampire told Karadok about the true way to escape Barovia and the realms, yet it was another clever trap laid by Strat to get rid of the enemy as the misty borders was dangerous for evil creatures and could suck them up, creating a new eternal prison around them as was Barovia for Strat. For more than a month, Sos pursued Karadok through Barovia until both ended up on misty borders. The Death Knight managed to kill his servant, yet was teleported by Dark Powers to his own new domain in 720 by Barovian timeline, the domain Citicus, or Land of Spectres. Over 30 years Thoth ruled this domain, and he called his new keep Nedragard, which meant not Dergard. Thoth's life in Citicus was full of action. In 720 he waged war against native elves. The war lasted for over 20 years, the event that would be called the Citican Civil War. By the end of the war, in 740, eventually he overthrew the resistance and lost interest in it, becoming obsessed with memory mirrors instead, ancient artifacts that helped Thoth to keep his painful memories intact, as Citicus drained them from Death Knight's mind. Withdrawing from Citicus' affairs pushed his loyal servant Azrael to usurp the power and draw almost all of the land under his rule in 743. Almost 10 years Thoth was inactive, chasing his memories and White Rose, a mysterious being who he considered to be Kithyara. He let Azrael plot the Dark Ritual that would strip Death Knight of all powers while giving the domain of Citicus under his full control. To make this ritual happen, Azrael and his team had to set up the same events that happened to Thoth back then. So Thoth fought Ogres. And then he found the woman, who was actually a secret ally of Azrael, and then he brought her to his castle. In 752, the final step of plan was step in motion, yet during the ritual, Azrael was stopped, but the blast of energy destroyed Nedragard Keep in the same way Cataclysm destroyed Dargard many centuries ago. The events repeated itself once again. Thoth didn't prevent Azrael's cataclysm and the keep turned on fire. The mysterious White Rose, who Thoth chased and believed to be lost Kityara, appeared on the doorstep, but instead it was Isolde with the Abomination Sun, and she offered Thoth to atone for his wrongs and sins, but he rejected the offer. This decision somehow teleported Thoth back to Kryn, to Dargard Keep. Meanwhile, in Citicus, a blessed knight had risen from all the crushed memory mirrors. He was the full opposition to Thoth and helped to do good in the land, becoming a legendary hero. Upon Thoth's return to Kryn, Takesis the Dark Queen imprisoned him for over 40 years. Yet, one day, in 421, 
she came back to Thoth and offered to command her grand undead armies. Yet, the Death Knight had a lot of time to contemplate on his past decisions. He rejected the offer for which Takesis in rage stripped Thoth of his curse and crushed him, bringing a Death Knight long-awaited peace. Is he a strong character? From the lore perspective, he was a battle-hardened knight, who became an unstoppable killing machine. Even Strat decided to avoid confronting him, and also he was named one of the deadliest villains in D&D, so yes, he's extremely dangerous. From the technical perspective, the stats from Realms of the Dread suggest that his armor class is zero. Say hello to Taco. But he wears a plated armor, so his armor class is minus three. And also, he was treated back there as a wizard class, so he had plenty of spells to cast. And if you haven't watched my video on Death Knight Evolution, you should check this out. So summarizing, he's a very powerful foe. And now a bit of DM tips on how to play him. The first thing that comes to my mind is Darth Vader. Corruption, jealousy, near-death experience and finally reincarnation into something unstoppable. He lost his wife, he lost his children and also he's burned by guilt inside and he doesn't want to admit it. And finally, redemption by death. So if you like Star Wars, I think this character can be a good inspiration for you. Secondly, if you come with high-level adventures, do not forget to use your loyal followers and Hellfire Orb. And thirdly, in social, I would say only information about Kithiara whereabouts would force you to parley with the party. That's all about Lord Thoth. And he made his full cycle from good to bad to deadly bad to good again and finally found peace. And that was a second video in the Death Knight series and if you like the lore, please press like and subscribe button and tell me in the comments below who else you would like to hear about. And see you next time!